Yeah, I wanted to speak about the horror film genre and what, what's so fascinating about it for you that it has been a topic for, I don't know, one of the earliest films we saw was from, or the video works that we saw was from 1999. Yeah. And yeah, and it still fascinates you, I think, and is still a motive and comes like in a reflection of the genre, but also in kind of using its conventions, using its codes, not only deconstructing them, but, only, but also using them in a very, um, joyful way, I would say. Okay, um, I will try my best with my English. I was, yeah, okay, I'll try my best. As I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I uh, admire the genre, and I, uh, I, I really think that with this genre, you can really look very deep into society and suppress uh, fears and uh, and trauma, and uh, also collective trauma, and uh, in a way, yeah, this is why I, I chose this, because uh, I think it really can do a lot to, to get up the stories, the hidden ones. I think that there's also, to a certain extent, it mixes with the science fiction genre in, in some of your works, for example, the performance work. I think it was much more uncanny and, and scary than the one Ich möchte gerne einmal einen Horrorfilm machen. The last one was really scary because I thought about this entity, this alien entity that takes over the human planet and then does things and leaves and like what, what the woman basically said about her group of alien... You speak of the performances. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also in your latest work in the No Beach Just Sand, there's for me, for me this science fiction um, part or kind of element in there, this utopian element, maybe that's a better word for it, not science fiction, but utopian element. And so they, they sort of merge and, and be intertwined, horror, utopia, fiction, science fiction. Yes, in, yeah, it is, and as we also know from other films, you always have this kind of crossovers of science, of uh, science fiction and, and the horror genre, and and yeah, in No Beach to Sand, it's really asking uh, about utopian idea, but in the same time asking about the past uh, of, um, and I I was studying uh, the the book of Binya Damchak, Gestern Morgen, and she's looking very deep into the past of all the lost uh, revolutions and what you kind of could have inherit. And uh, it is a, it, you know, it's the latest film and it always takes time for me to start to like what I do or, or what I did. And uh, I'm not through yet with this film, but in a way, uh, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like before the fight or after the fight, you don't know it. And it kind of has, it's, it's working on like emptied surfaces because uh, you know the surrounding is gone and it's all in this kind of abstract space and uh, kind of looking and searching for a language uh, where a, a new action could start. So it, it is a kind of limbo in a way. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because then I thought what's the difference to the earlier works, for example, Gras Abbey or um, Helen Abbey und das Meer. And with these, you are staying much more at the surface. I had a feeling that for in no beach, just sand, you already are through the surface. You are in a different space with it. With the others, it's still on the surface. You still, it's still a survey. And what do you see? What? How can I get into that image? And with the latest one, you're through that image. And like you said, in the limbo. So that was because when I watched it, I was also thinking, okay, what's the what's the difference to the to all the works? How did it? How are still things in, in um, more recent works, and how did it transform? Yeah. Um, and, and as you can see, you know, from the materiality, you know, uh, in the earlier works, I kind of believed in the materiality of the video and the electronic aesthetic, and also the kind of cracked aesthetic. I was uh, in purpose working with a wrong codex so that the, the image was kind of breaking and, and, and was uh, hurt and, and disturbed all the time. And the, the story uh, evolved through the reflection on the medium, 
on the language I used and on this kind of mediated space I'm creating when I step in front of the camera. So there's a certain amount of time I have in order to set the story or get the story set and this really brought me into a big stress and, uh, but it also uh, forced me to, to kind of use the language in the most uh, uh, effect effective way or also to, then to also to size it down to, to the basic thing I want to say. But it means that you don't believe in the materiality of, of video anymore? Or, no, no, I'm just asking because it's... Yeah, probably. <laughs> You know, it, it is what I believed then, you know? And like in B-Star, it's, it's always, you know, there I, you know, like in the horror film, I also believe in, believed in the acting body in, inside of the uh, film space and really acting and creating and, you know, get through it. And in the B-Star, it is already, you know, really connected to the camera and quite inactive and a lot of off voice is kind of imposed on the body but the body is still denying to be uh, defined or uh, having to perform a story or like also the female body it's also a very feminist view on 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 uh, yeah on the body the language and being being determined by by the medium and the language i think there's also i mean con concerning the body and the, when we or Speaking of the body, I think there's also this element of, um, hmm, I don't know if it's performativity, but it's definitely touching bodies, to, to put it quite simple, bodies touching each other, human, non-human bodies, like the finale, for example. Yeah. And uh, there's also this scene in Helen Abbey on the smear at the, at the, a smear? <laughs> the smear at the end, where you see this footage of two yeah. men, I don't know, one showing the other probably how to do a certain dance or a fighting Tai Chi, Capoeira or whatever. And so I think there's this moment of touching that is a literal one and also in terms of affecting us and our bodies as, um, as an audience. And I see this, this goes I think through almost all of the videos, there is no None, I think, where this is not present except for us, maybe. Yeah. But this is something that will always interest you, you think? Or is that something that you have been interested for a while? Or is that connected to your performance work or kind of working with music and performance as well? I mean, uh, co uh, concerning the, my performance work, of course, uh, I'm, I'm always, yeah, I have to deal with it. I, don't, I can't escape it, I can't escape the body and I can't escape to always find a new form of how I want to show the body. It's not something I think, a yeah, a space, a body, no move. It's not natural, not at all. I mean, the body as a, as a cultural uh, messenger uh, always has to be defined um, like in the Farewell to Hell. I chose, you know, just take the body parts and in order to have an endless body to be extended throughout the frame so I can really deal with it, you know, in a really, really strong way. Uh, and, and also in a, yeah, sexual way also, why not? Yeah. I mean, it's also, I think it, there's also this element on the, um, on the level of language where you refer to that. No bitch just saying crazy, it's common the labor. And I think in Arab is really something, it has a totally different connotation if you say body or as a körper and lab. I don't know, I'm sorry the translation, but yeah, it's, it's a really different connotation and, and reference, space of references that it opens up. Like it, it can also be pure material, you know, so I can really also lose respect of, of the body or that kind of, you know, uh, never touch it, but really you know, put it in parts, show it only in parts and all this in relation to the space and the space is always changing. So, yeah, it's not defined anymore or has, to, has or is searching for something else. Are there questions from the audience? I have been pregnant.
practicing uh, it's in yeah. You know, it, it was really done with uh, the, you know, smallest uh, means and, and, you know, I asked my brother to go to the wrestling hall. I did wrestling and I loved it all the time. I love it, you know, and it's all in the area where I come from. Like wrestling is really, um, seen as a very important thing, you know. And I always wanted to do it as a girl as well, but I was not allowed. But so we went there, and they're called Bill, you know, the, these Muppets. And um, actually I wanted to, to do something absolutely absurd, you know. Uh, to fight against the Muppet is really just absurd. <coughs> and uh, the film really didn't, didn't develop, so I was very unhappy. Unless I found out, hey, come on, let's play it backwards. And all, all of a sudden everything made sense in a way that all the, the fighting gestures kind of, uh, um, how you say, transformed into something else. And it became also a very, a very lovely relationship, you know, to, to this body with one arm gone. And, and so, yeah, and I was very happy that it developed completely in a, to a different direction. It developed by chance and through a, a fight of, okay, the, the thing I have is not satisfying me, so I just have to, to change it and transform it. And luckily, the, the music of my brother, I mean, it also is something that I'm always very happy about, that my brother is such an excellent musician. Yeah. More questions? Stick with that question about chance. How much is chance related in your work? How important is, is chance? Or is everything planned through? Uh, no. Nothing is planned. Also, chance is... Um, it's more uh, exploitation in a way. Like exploiting the material. And... Uh, I, it is also a fight, in a way, when I uh, use text or as an off-voice, I, I rely on, on this, but I also have to kind of um, subvert it in a way. So I have to reflect the language I use and the words I use in order to break uh, into the film or the visual image. So it is a really uh, intense uh, work process of work and uh, where I really have to reflect everything I'm using. You see it also with the Helen Abe und das Meer. So it's a lot about reflection on the medium itself, on the border, the edges, but then also transform or also, you know, like then the landscape, and it, you know, all of a sudden you have kind of a political uh, story, and then it goes again somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the question of chance is also, I think for me, related to, to your performance today, because there was this point where you said you lost the thread, and we were all like, no, this is part of the performance, <laughs> this cannot be. And you had to announce it like, I think, three times before we accepted it. <laughs> if you lose one sentence, you're lost. And I forgot one sentence and I was lost. <laughs> that is why I was so nervous, so. No, it was fantastic, really, because I was like, or God, it's a nightmare when it happens, but then now I'm happy I could I did it. <laughs> Are there more questions? Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, did yes, you say microphone. something about the choice? The choice uh, why you chose for the last uh, for the performance to be a performance and not not a, a video? Just a film. Yes. I mean incorporating your voice over <coughs> into the movie instead yeah. of I have never done it as a movie. There were, once there was an idea to make a film out of it, 
in order also just to really close the case. On the other hand, I really like the moment of uh, when of the plenum of the partition of language and image, and uh, the, the, to have the performance as a moment where you put the language onto the image. Um, yeah, that, this is it, actually. And that the story really just e evolves uh, while these parts are coming together. And like in the beginning when I just name the images, so I like the act of doing it and, you know, to really go a bit, I don't know, beyond or, or somewhere else where you always know that the word is never matching the thing you see and to show this as a, a strong element of what language and body image can do. More questions? With her, yeah. There are a certain interest in patterns uh, because when you use this uh, kind of uh, masks, and uh, so you you use also the wrong kind of key in the video, so certain patterns appear. Right? And then in this other video where you use this. Uh, which video you mean? Uh, no, I don't remember. <laughs> no, but so the, the patterns which appear when you use the, the wrong key for the video? Yeah. yeah. The strong patterns. The pattern, you mean like muster? Yeah, the yeah. muster, yeah. yeah. Is, there, is, there, no, is, there, is there a certain interest in patterns? It, for you, in your work? It was then, it was a certain interest because I never had access to really good uh, gear, but um, it was like I said before, you know, I wanted to play with the materiality of a video image. I wanted to give it a, a body, a skin, so it, it kind of was, it felt touchier. Or uh, then in Helen Abbey und das Meer, I filmed, then I had, a, a, I was filming it from the computer, so I had all these stripes, you know. So that always to process the image, not just to take what I filmed, it was always not satisfying. Or it was also very good to film it from an analog monitor, you know, which is has light, and it gave the image more depth. This is all, you know, for different reasons, I was always, I was often ending up uh, to let the, the image go through something else, through another machine in order to, get a grip on it, and, yeah. I think, I mean, I have another question um, about, about the structure or the materiality and the pattern that you just started to ask about, because I thought the same in connection to language, and then I thought that it's definitely about the structure of language and the structure that creates meaning, basically, that you're interested in, but also the materiality of language that is then expressed through the voice, I think. Because how you modulate the voice is, is, is really important. Was that also always a topic? Did you kind of more, hmm, did you start with using it very sparse and then kind of getting into it? Or was that always part of the process? Yeah, it started with, with the film uh, Bista Unkillable. Uh, it was the first time that I used uh, an off voice because before I was speaking, you could see me, so you had it all, the body and the voice together. And then it was just too strong and too flat and it was, um, there was no, I couldn't uh, create a relation between the off voice and the image and so I had to, get the off voice with the text, of course, to go through something else, which is also, you know, like to go through a pitch, to go through different spaces. Uh, I also recorded the text in different spaces and then put it together again. It was a very intense editing process in order to have that voice, you know, to gain a, a 
body or, or to, to let her not just go away so cheap and easy. More questions? Yes. I think it was the first film with this found, or the second, with this found footage where these two men start to, and it's not clear what they are doing. Is it fighting or are they dancing? Can you say something about this footage? And also, when do you become interested in the footage? Um, uh, it happened, uh, it is a found footage. Uh, I happened to live opposite the park and they happened to, to uh, come in front of my camera and I was just filming them. And uh, I also, you know, did the same, like, I filmed it again from the monitor and I liked uh, their performance and I just used it. But what are they doing? Are they fighting or are they... No, they do a kind of Tai Chi exercise yeah. and he looks like Michael J. Fox, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Like, like a, you know, this... <laughs> so, yeah. Questions? And I'm going to ask one last question about humor, how important humor is. Because I, I was surprised that not many more people laughed during some of the videos because I think they're also really funny, even though it's a laughter that sometimes is kind of stuck in your throat. But, yeah, I mean, is that something that you or that is calculated, planned, or is that just happening because language is so malleable? Because language is so, so malleable and you just what wait and have a quanta. Mm -hmm. And also the also because of its variety of of meanings that it can <coughs> or connotations that it can have. I think in a way um, the the stories are somehow tough and uh, I could not tell them without uh, this amount of humor and humor is also to, to, to get into a distance also to what you are just saying. Uh, so it's a technique in a way to, to pass uh, the stuff and make it uh, absorbable or uh, that swallow. So you can swallow it, so you can take it. Uh, and I'm not a funny person at all, really not. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Mm. But I think, yeah, I, for me it's really an important tool and a technique. Also, to how to deal with language in order not to get it too serious and too flat. I think you, humor always has a depth. Yeah. Yeah. If there are not more questions, then thank you very much for coming and for performing and showing your works. Works for your us. invitation. <laughs> and thank you for coming. And we have. Yeah, we have uh, drinks downstairs, so please join us for some drinks. And also, Ben Teller is going to present his uh, publication about queer publishing, the family tree of queer publishing. It will also be downstairs, so please stay a little bit longer for these events and have a